All right, we're looking at the families of functions test review today. We're going to go through each question on this test review and uh, go through it in depth. First thing here, determine if the function's even, odd, or neither. All right, so what we look at is our exponents on this. So in this one here, this is to the third power, so that's odd. This one, well, that's x to the one power, that's odd. And it looks like every term is odd, so this is an odd function. It's odd. What about this one here? Even, odd, or neither? Well, this has a two exponent, so that's even. This is x to the one, that's odd. And they're even and odd, so that's neither. Neither. It's got to be all even, or it's all odd. Okay, what about this third one here? Okay, let's look here. This is four, that's uh, even. This six, that's even. That's two, that's even. They're all even, so it's even. All right, moving right along. Number four here. Find f of negative four. All right, we want to, this is a piecewise function. We want to find the function value of negative four. So this is what x is, so I have to look over here and see which piece that belongs to. Negative four is less than negative two. Yeah, that's right. It goes in that piece there. Negative four is greater than negative two. It does not go there. It's in the top one. So I put negative four in here. So now here I got a negative in front. Now I got to be careful. So it's negative. Then I put my negative four in for x plus 12. Okay. So that makes a positive four plus 12, which is 16. There you go. That's my value right there. <clears throat> what about five? f of negative 2. So negative 2, we'll see over here, okay, negative 2 is not less than negative 2. Negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So it's in this piece on the bottom. So I put negative 2 right there. Negative 2 minus 4, negative 6. Okay. What about this one here? f of 6. So x is 6 here. So I look over here. 6 is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's the piece it belongs in. So I put it in right here. So I'm going to go 6 minus 4. That's 2. Answer of 2. Okay, so these piecewise functions are not too bad. Let's go on to this one here. <clears throat> All right, we've got a three-part piece function. Find g of negative 5. Well, let's see which piece here is negative 5 belonging to. I think it's right here. Negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 3. So it belongs in that piece. So I'm going to put it right there. So I've got 2 times negative 5 minus 11. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Minus 11 is negative 21. There's my answer. Okay. What about g of 3? Or negative 3. g of negative 3 here. <clears throat> Alright, let's see here. Uh, negative 3 is in this piece because it's less than or equal to negative three. So I put it in here just like I did the previous one. Two times negative three minus 11. Two times negative three is negative six minus 11, negative 17. There you go. What about g of nine, or g of negative one here, number nine. All right, which piece is negative one in? Well, it's not that one. I think it's right here in this middle one. Because see, negative one is between negative three and two. So I'm going to put it in there. So I've got 3 times negative 1 minus 9. Right there. 3 times negative 1 minus 9. That's negative 3 minus 9, which is negative 12. Okay. And then this one here, number 10, g of 3. Let's see. I think 3 is right here, greater than 2. 3 is greater than 2. So it, will, it goes in this one. So 2 times 3 squared plus 7 times 3. Now you can just punch this straight in the calculator if you want to. <clears throat> That's going to be uh, 39. I did it in my head. 39. Okay. All right. Now, let's move on to something different now. Graphing piecewise functions. All right. Which of these four graphs, let me get it lined up a little bit better here. Okay. Which one of these four graphs is the graph of this? Okay. So, first, I have to look at my transition value, which is negative 1. All right, so at negative one, the function value is negative one. So that means that negative one gives me negative one, so I should have this point for that piece. 
So negative one, negative one is right there. Okay, so there it is. You can see it's marked on every one of those. But here's the thing. See the equal to line? That means this must be colored in. So it can't be this one, it's not colored in. And it can't be that one, it's not colored in. It's gotta be one of these two here, cause they're both colored in. All right, now it's less than. Well, this goes greater than, so it can't be that one, which means it's gotta be this one. So you see it's less than, so it's negative one. Uh, it's a straight horizontal line because there's no X in it. And then down here, if X is greater than one, it's negative three. That means when I put negative one in the bottom one, I get negative three, and it's not colored in because it does not have the equal to line. So see, negative one, negative three is right there. So that's perfect. Okay. <clears throat> now what about this one? Okay. All right, so my transition value is two on this one. So if I put two in this top piece, if I put two in here, negative four plus two times two, I get zero. So at two, <clears throat> it should be zero, which is right here. There's one. Two, zero, it's not on this one. Two, zero, nope. Two, zero, nope. It's gotta be that one. Now suppose there was another one that had it. So then what I would do is, I would pick something less than two. See, X is less than two, so I'd pick like one. And I put one in. So negative four plus two times one would be negative two. So one would give me negative two. So see here at one, negative two, see how it's on my line there? And so that tells me that this line is right. Then I would have to check that piece if I had another one that had that same line. So that means I'd come down here in this piece, I'd put two in it. So negative one minus two would be negative three. <clears throat> so I'd have two, negative three, and it would be colored in this time. So see two, negative three is right there. See how it's colored in? And then I'd have to pick something greater than two, like three. So negative one minus three would be negative four. So see here at three, negative four. See, it's on my line there. And so that's perfect right there. That's the answer. All right, here's one that might be a little harder. Let's try this one. Okay. So let's check this top piece, negative one. I'm gonna put negative one in, but when I put negative one, it's just negative two. So negative one, negative one, negative two, I think it's on every one of those, this point right here. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna have to pick a value less than negative one. All right, let's do uh, negative two then. If I put negative two in, well, I get negative two because see, that's just the value. There's no X in there. So, so negative two, negative two. So if I go negative two, negative two right there, that looks right. Right here, see, that looks right. So both of these have this piece here that's right for the, for the top piece of the piecewise function. So both of these are right. These two are wrong, so we forget about them. Now we go to this bottom piece. So I put negative one in, okay? If I put negative one in, now you gotta do negative three minus, and in parentheses, negative one. Okay, that's gonna be negative two. Which negative one, negative two, C is same on both of those. All right, now that means I gotta pick something greater than negative one, like zero. So if I put zero in, negative three minus zero is negative three. Zero, negative three. So it means if I don't go over any, I go down three. Well, that's not this one. See here, if I don't go very down three, it's right there. There's my answer right there. Okay, see zero, I don't go over any. I go down three, which puts me right there on the line. So that's it. Okay, now, next thing up is this right here. All right, which of these is quadratic? Quadratic right here. You gotta know these names, that's quadratic. Okay, what about this one? Which graph is a square root? Here's your square root right there. Okay, you gotta know these. 14, which graph below is linear? Here's linear. L-I-N-E, forms a straight line. That's it right there. 
Okay, which graph below here is absolute value? There's absolute value right there. Okay. And then uh, 15 here. Which of these is reciprocal or rational? Right here, F. That's reciprocal. Or rational function, they call it both names. And then here's the last one, cubic. And here's cubic right here. All right, so you got to know these names and what graph they look like, okay? All right, then you also have to know the function notation. Like right here, 17, which graph has this function notation, f of x equals x? That's linear. That's linear. Okay. Uh, this one here, which function notation is x squared? That's quadratic. Right there, quadratic. Which graph has this one? X to the third? That's cubic. Right there. Alright, which one has this absolute value of X? Well, here's the absolute value right there. Here's the uh, square root of X. Right there. So you're doing the square root of X. And then here's the last one here. 1 over X. That's a rational function. And it's this right here. Reciprocal. Okay, now it might help if you just maybe write these down and, and learn them, okay? We've got six of them. We've got linear, we've got quadratic, we've got absolute value, we've got reciprocal, we've got cubic, and I'm leaving one off. Square root. Alright. There you go. There's my six names that we're learning. And then uh, this is uh, the function notation. Linear is f of x equals x. Quadratic is x squared. Absolute value. x is in the absolute value bars. Reciprocal, you have 1 divided by x. Cubic, you have x to the third power. And then square root, you have uh, the square root of x. Like this right here. Okay. And then a little graph. Here's linear. Quadratic does this. Absolute value has this v. Reciprocal has these two parts that look like this. Cubic, you have this curve, it does this. And then square root, it starts right here in the middle and it does that. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Maybe write these down and study them so you know these. There's going to be some of those questions on the test. Okay. Alright, now shifting to uh, domain and range. What's the domain and range of this function right here? Let me see if I can get it all on there. Okay. What's the domain and range here? All right. Well, now as you look at this, what's as this thing goes up, now there should be arrows here, but it goes forever. So what's the furthest to the left it's going to go? Negative infinity. What's the furthest to the right? Well, as it goes this way, it keeps going to the right, and it goes to the right, and negative infinity, or positive infinity. So you look at the domain, it's one of those two. Can't be these. Now, what's my range? All right, now if you look here, it starts right here going up and down. See, range is up and down. It starts here and it goes up forever. It starts right here at two. So it looks like this one. This is my answer right there. Okay. All right, what about this one? All right, what's my domain and range for this function? All right, so my domain, and look here, domain, left and right. Here's the furthest to the left it goes. One, two, three, negative four. And it's going to have a bracket because, see, it's colored in. Now, it goes, see the arrow? It goes to, to the right forever. So there's your domain right there, which is uh, clearly C, and that's the only one. Okay? So it's got to be C. But now look at the range. What's the range on this? Range is up and down. And as you notice, as this thing goes this way, it goes down forever. So it goes negative infinity down. 
But as far as going up, it goes up to right here and stops at two. And it does include it, so there's be my range. So that's what we have right there. C's the answer. Okay. Let's go to this one here. What's the domain range here? I'm gonna move it up to there. All right, so we can see it. What's my domain and my range here? All right, anytime you have a parabola, the domain in a parabola, negative infinity to positive infinity. Because as this thing goes up on the left, it goes to the left forever. As it goes up over here on the right, it goes to the right forever. So left and right, there's your domain on all these. So we know it's got to be one of these two right there, straight up. It can't be the, it can't be those two. All right, now range. Range is up and down. And as you notice, as this thing goes up and down, well, the furthest down it goes is right there. And we've got the wrong answers on here. Yeah, this is negative six. I didn't change these when I, I put a different picture on there and I didn't change my range numbers. But the, it goes down negative six. Let's just make this a negative six. And it goes up forever. So there would be the answer there. That should be negative six. Okay. All right, what about this one? This absolute value. Now, absolute value, I didn't tell that on the one we did a while ago. Did we do that today a while ago? Yeah, number 20. Absolute value is just like quadratic. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Because see here, as this thing goes down on the left, it goes to the left forever. And as it goes down here on the right, it goes to the right forever. So negative infinity to positive infinity is my domain. All right, now what's my range? Now range, remember now range, is up and down. So as this thing goes up and down, it goes down forever. So it's gonna be negative infinity from the low side. But the high side, it goes up to here and quits at six. And it should be bracketed in. So there's my answer right there, C. Oh, can't see it, I'm sorry. That'd be my answer right there. See, it goes down forever, but it goes up to six, and that's the highest as it goes. Okay, now what about this one, the domain and range here? All right, this is a cubic function. Okay, this cubic function goes down forever, and it goes up forever. So my range is going to be one of these three right here. My domain, though, as it goes down to the left, it's going to the left. So it's gonna go left forever. And as it goes up on the right, it's gonna go right forever. So here's my domain right there. There's my answer, A. So just remember this. Now this is any cubic. It's got negative infinity, positive infinity for domain and range. Okay. What about the domain and range here? This is a reciprocal function. All right, well, as I go left and right here on this, I can go to the left forever here. But as I come this way, I got this asymptote that I can't cross. So that means I've got this piece here. It goes from negative infinity up to this value right here, which is negative 2. All right. So we can see that's got to be one of these two right here. It can't be that one. Now, on this side... It starts right here at this dotted line, and it goes this way to positive infinity. Oh, I'm sorry, this dotted line, I don't know why, it should be negative two, not negative infinity. See, it starts right at this dotted line at negative two, and it goes this way forever. So there'd be, so there's an answer right there. It's gotta be D. Now if you look at your range, same thing, it goes up and down. Well, this thing goes down negative infinity, and it comes to four, negative four right there. So it'll be negative infinity to negative four. And then it starts on this, this part. It starts at negative four and it goes to positive infinity. So there's my answer right there. D. Okay. Now we're gonna shift gears a little bit. We're gonna look at uh, 
these transformations. I don't think all my paper is printed out. Hold on. Let me... Sorry about that. I didn't realize my paper had ran out of my printer when I printed this off. Okay, now match this function with the description of what the transformation is. Oh, I didn't print them all, I don't think. So you see this minus 8? This is vertical, which is going to go down 8. So right here. Okay, make sure you know the difference in these. Now this one here. See the difference on these two? Uh, see the difference on these two right here? Minus 8 outside the bars is going to go down. But see the minus 8 inside the bars? It's going to do the opposite of that, which is going to take it to the right 8. So that's going to go F. Okay. And then we have 8 outside like this right here. That's going to make it go up. Vertical shift eight units up. But see, then we got the eight in the bars, which means it's gonna do the opposite horizontally. It's gonna go left. So it's gonna horizontal shift eight units to the left. So that's D. Okay. Number 30, same thing here. This eight's a multiplier, which means it's gonna stretch it. It's positive, so it's going to stretch it up. So right here, it's a vertical stretch, eight units up. And then here's a negative multiplier, which means it's stretching it down. So vertical stretch, eight units down right there. Okay. Now, let me uh, check my printer. Sorry about that, guys. I'm wasting your time on this video. All right, 32 here. Describe how the graph of this equates to here. All right, so what do we have going on here? This is going to reflect it over the x-axis. So if we look on here, reflection across the x-axis, so it's got to be one of these three right here. It can't be these. So these are out right there. Okay, when you have a negative, see here? Like, uh, this is going to make a parabola like that. It's going to reflect it over the x-axis, which is going to make it be down here like that. So it reflects over the x-axis. Okay. Now, what does this minus 9 do? All right, that's inside the parentheses with the x. If it's with the x, that's horizontal. But it does the opposite, which is going to make it go 9 to the right. So right here, 9 units to the right, right there. B. B is the correct choice. What about 33? Okay, now we got a two, two uh, transformations here. This minus 4, see that's inside, that's horizontal. And it's going to make it go to the right 4. And this is vertical right here, it's going to go down 7. So it's going to go 4 to the right, 4 to the right, 7 units down, B. All right, now graph this one. Which graph is the correct one here? All right, well, we got this negative in front, which means it's going to go down. So they're all going down, so that's that's all right. Now this minus 2 inside means it's going to go horizontal to the right 2, and this is going to go down 3. So I need to go to the right 2 and down 3. That goes up 3. That's not it. See, this goes to the left 2 and down 3. Here it is right here. To the right two and then down three. There's my answer right there. Okay. 
about 35 here. Graph this function. All right, we've got this two, which means it's uh, from your vertex. If I go over one, I go up two, and that's what it's doing here. And every one of those do that, so that's good there. Now this plus one is going to take it this way one, and the plus two is going to take it up two. So I'm going to the left one and up two. It looks like D here to me. See there, I'm going to the left one and I'm going up two. These are here, two, C, two, four, six, eight, ten. So that would be one and up two. Right, what about this uh, square root graph? Okay, this minus six is going to take it this way, six, and that's going to go up three. So I have to go over to the right, six, and up three, I think we're here. C, two, four, six, up two, three. There you go. Oh, here's another square root one. Okay, let's see here. We're going back seven and we're going up three. All right, so since I'm going this way, that's going to be x plus seven. And I'm going up three, which would be plus three. So it should look like this. Uh, no, C right there. C's answer. Okay, now here's another parabola, quadratic. Let's see here. Now see how this, look here. See, when I go over one, see how it goes down two? So see, I have these negative twos there in front, multipliers. That stretches it down. Normally, now like I was telling you beforehand, when you have a vertex, when you go over one, it goes down one. When I go over one, down one. Over one, down one. That's what they normally do. This one, you go over one, it goes down two because of the multiplier. All right, now, what about the vertex? Well, I'm going this way, two, and I'm going up five. So it's going to be a plus five. But when I go this way, two, that means it's going to be x minus two. It's going to be the opposite. So it looks like right here, B. B's my answer. Okay, almost done. Which equation do we have here? So, uh, looks like we're going over one and up two. So I'm going this way one, which would be x plus one. I'm going up two, would be plus two. So it should be plus and plus. Right here. And then number 40, last one. Okay, the equation here. All right, so I'm going over one and I'm going up five. So since I'm going this way, one is going to be plus one, x plus one, and, and I'm sorry, and that's the value bars. And I'm going up five, so it's going to be plus five. So it should be x plus one plus five, which look here. Uh, these should be pluses. These are all pluses. Supposed to be. But look here, see I got x plus one plus five and x plus one plus five. I've got two of them that say that, but see here's the thing, this thing's going down, which means it's gotta be negative. So this should be the answer right there. These are pluses, they should be, I think they that's what they will be on the on the uh, review. I just made a mistake when I was printing this out to make for your benefit. Anyway, that's families of functions test review. Contact me if you need any help or if I've confused you at all. And uh, I'll try to help you all I can. So have a good rest of the day, okay?